Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to start talking about FPGAs, Field Programmable Gate Arrays. If you're a digital designer, FPGA designer, you can skip this because this is going to be way too basic for you. We're only going to touch on the basics here. Just for folks who are interested in getting started learning a little bit about FPGAs. Alright, let's go. got a couple of different FPGAs here. They are both Altera FPGAs. This one uses the Max 10 and it's about the size of an Arduino Nano. And in this box we have the DE0 Nano. Pardon the crinkly noises. This is what we're going to concentrate on. It's about the size of a uh, Arduino Uno. But uh, there's the Max 10 FPGA, and there's the Cyclone 4 FPGA. So, big difference in size. I don't know about a big difference in performance. I am not sophisticated enough to tell you about it. Basically, everything else on this board simply supports the FPGA. You know, we have USB, we've got a 50 megahertz clock, we've got another clock over here. We have a couple buttons, a couple switches, some LEDs. On the back, we have some memory. We also have the built-in USB blaster for programming, so you don't need an external device, which is the reason I picked this guy here. Now... I've said FPGA, what, about 20 times, so what is an FPGA? Well, it's an IC, an integrated circuit, that is designed to be configured by the customer, whether that's industry, government, or a hobbyist, after its manufacture. That's why it's a field programmable gate array. Um, it uses what's called HDL, Hardware Descriptive Language, or you can use basically a CAD program to just draw out your designs. Now, the big thing is here, this guy is purely digital. While you can implement any sort of digital logic you can think of, any type of gate, and or not, X or um, X and, MUXs, you know, any type of digital logic that you can think of, things that you can't implement are op amps, comparators, voltage regulators, analog devices. This is a digital device. And once it's done and once it ends, once you're done with your programming and you've it's not really programming, once you have configured the FPGA, what you end up with is what's called an ASIC, an application specific integrated circuit. So what's in the FPGA? Just basically a bunch of logic blocks that can be configured any way you want them to. Now they got, the FPGAs are about, I don't know, four or five generations up from a PROM, a programmable read-only memory. Now Altera Corporation, that's who makes uh, both of these, one of the two big players, the other is Xilinx. They came about in the early 80s and they came out with their first FPGA, the EP300, back in uh, 1984. And when we started back then, well, it was 87, Xilinx had 9,000 configurable units on theirs. Then in 92, uh, the Naval Surface Warfare Center did a, a considerable experimentation with FPGAs, and they were able to get 600,000 logic units. In 2000, we had a couple million, and in uh, 2013, we were up to about 50 million logic units. Now, you're not going to find that on these little consumer units. The DE0 here has 22,230 logic elements. It also has 32 megabytes of SD RAM, an 8-channel 12-bit analog-to-digital converter, and 153 configurable pins. So that's the hardware. How do we configure this? Well, for that, we can use a hardware descriptive language, or we can use a CAD program to basically draw it out. Um, Manufacturers have their own systems, their own development environments. 
the one for Altera is called Quartus. And we're going to take a look at that now. So this is Quartus Prime 18.1.0. And this is the free version that we're playing around with for the DE0, DE0 Nano FPGA. Now when you bring it up, you get all kinds of different windows. And uh, we're going to take a look at how this basically works. So if we want to start a new project, we can come over here and say new project. And then we go through this little wizard here. And we want to make sure everything here basically has the same name to keep things as easy as possible. So we'll call this YouTube. What's the name of the project? YouTube. And see how it, it matches there. We want to create it? Yes. And we're going to make it just an empty project. We're not going to add any files at this point. And then we need to know which chip we're using. And the chip that is in the DE Nano is a 2276N. So we just got to come through here 22C67N. Let's see. Where's she at? That's this one right here. We don't have to do anything here. And then it gives us a brief overview of what's going on. Click finish. And now it creates the parts of what we've got going on. It takes a couple seconds. There's, it's creating a lot of different files. All right. So the next thing we can do is we can add a new file here and we have all these different files like we can start with the block diagram file pretty simple and then we can come up through here and we can add things like a gate here's an XOR and we can bring it in here like that oops there we go and then we can come in and we can add pins to it as well So we can come up here and say, you know, here's an input. And here's an output. Line them up something like that. Then we simply connect them. With buses. Now, that is an incredible oversimplification of what's going on okay but I mean yeah that'll kind of work for this give you an idea of just what's going on now once that has all been completed and we've done all this then we need to assign our pins so we can come in here and say see the pin planner and this shows you all of the available pins on this particular device but you're not going to get any real good information here. The best thing to do is to come here to the user's manual, scroll down through here, and we'll be able to find we're getting close. There we go. Like for instance, there's key one key two, the two buttons, they map out to pin E1 and pin J15. And then there's some LEDs. 
just so that you know you know what you're talking about here all right oops hit the wrong button so then that would bring us to the assignment editor where we can talk about those pins see we can come in here and say which pins to assignment value all this kind of stuff now once we have all of this done well then we come over to processing and we can start our compilation and when that is going on so I can move this here you'll see all the things over here filling up with uh, bars and then they'll get a check mark when they're all done and once we're completely finished then we can program the device so that's the basic overview of how the software works but keep in mind there's a lot of other things that it does and drawing the schematic diagram is not always the best way to do it one of the nice tools that we are provided with here from Terassic is this uh, system builder tool and we can come over here and you can see we can have our, our project name YouTube and uh, we're not using the clock we're not using the SDRAM accelerator say we're just using uh, buttons and LEDs we can go like this it's telling us what we're using and then we can generate that I was going to save it here on the desktop just like that now we can uh, go back into Quartus and import those files so now if we reopen Quartus takes just a second here we should have our pin assignments ready to go do, 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 do. okay so now if we look at our assignment editor there you go we have all of our LEDs and all of our keys mapped out the assignment names whether they're a location IO standard uh, the voltage levels whether they're enabled what entity they belong to that's just a nice tool that makes things a whole lot easier to use and believe me as complicated as this stuff is you definitely want to make it as easy to use as possible all right well I think that's as far as we want to go today there is uh, so much going on here we want to keep this in manageable uh, bite-sized pieces so when we come back with part two of this we'll look at actually using the schematic editor and Verilog to create uh, a simple FPGA design but before we go I would just like to thank the anonymous viewer who took pity on me after my red uh, dry erase marker failed to work and sent me I can get it up with one hand a lifetime supply of dry erase markers we shall never have that problem again good sir and I salute you <laughs> alright if you guys enjoyed this video I hope you'll give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe big thanks to all my patrons if you're not a patron yet a buck a month helps the channel move on, move along quite nicely so give it a shot patreon.com slash learn electronics all right that's it i'm out peace